All right, you ready for this? Here we go. Oh, oh, so close. Oh. Come on, you can do it. Oh. All right, man, let's get you back together. Well, Reese and I are in a bit of a recreational mood this week. That's right. I'm going on vacation next week, so no video next week. This video is going to be kind of short, probably. I just have a few announcements to make. i got a couple things I want to show you. And just to let you know, August is going to be a little bit sparse, I'm sorry to say. In terms of videos from moi. It's a busy month. Not only do I have vacation next week, I have a mini demo and a workshop to prepare for for Etcher. There'll be more information about that coming. Big announcement is that next week I will be at Wet Paint. Thursday the 12th. You live in the St. Paul, Minneapolis area. Maybe you want to come by and see. Again, it's Thursday the 12th. It'll be from 4.30 p.m. to around 6.30 p.m. right in that little range. So little two hour window there but I will be meeting Darren the, one of the owners uh, for the first time be able to look over uh, their store be able to see the place that's exclusively selling my uh, M gram set so that's kind of exciting our vacation will be taking us uh, nearby in Iowa where my in-laws live so we'll be there part of the week so it was a natural to be able to stop by so I'm looking forward to that so if you're in the area and want to stop by and say howdy I hope you will Marty Owings I think is going to be there and hopefully we'll be shooting a little bit of video so even if you can't make it or don't live in that area I hope to be able to, to maybe put together a little vlog and kind of show you the event so yeah I'm really looking forward to that aside from that uh, as I said, August is just a busy month. Uh, school starts back. Uh, we're managing four of my grandkids, which I've told you guys before. I won't go into that. So there will be content coming from me. I just don't know how much or when. That is until I can get back into a groove and kind of get control of my schedule a little bit again. So that takes care of the announcements. And I got a couple things to show you. So let's go do that. All right, so no doubt if you're familiar with my videos, you may have seen uh, my use of this and my fondness for the art toolkit. It's been mentioned in a couple of videos. I've used it in several videos. I love the art toolkit. Uh, it's kind of become my go-to for uh, packing the pencils, pens, and brushes, and the palette. Maria Coriel Martin, who I did an interview with, if you haven't seen that interview, I'll link to it in the description, produced these. She herself is an expeditionary artist, so these are field tested, and she has sort of made them to her own uh, liking and preferences to be used in the field. And it's kind of become my go-to, mainly because I like uh, metal palettes. I mean, I love palettes like the Portable Painter and the Portable Painter Micro. I think they're great, awesome palettes. Um, I tend to, however, uh, attach mine to the sketchbook or drawing board magnetically. So I really like the metal palette. This was uh, her main staple the pocket palette and you can see you know with my hands about the scale of it and it's great this this is the one i use most frequently just by way of recap all of these uh little pans are magnetic they're customizable you can get the little ones get the square ones you can get the big ones even with white in the bottom for more mixing area uh so very customizable of course she's got the pouch as i've mentioned there's a smaller version of this if you really want to go light and uh, her next palette was this one, which is the Demi palette, this little tiny thing. Again, same configuration. Uh, you can even get them pre-filled. This particular one came pre-filled with colors. Nice little split primary palette there. Love this. I've used this. Comes in black finish also. With the smallest uh, wells, you can get up to 12, even in this little Demi palette. So she's got a nice little family of products uh, going here. Well, there's a new member of the family. That's what I want to show you today. Going from the pocket palette to the Demi palette to the folio. And I'm excited about this because uh, I often prefer to carry into the field a bigger palette. I like to have that option. 
So look at this. And I love the black finish too. Oh my. Look at all that mixing area. Loving that. And I'm going to uh, fill this. I'm going to customize it too. I don't particularly need that many colors. So I'm probably going to swap those out for bigger pans. And somewhere down the road, uh, I will take you with me as I fill this and use this. Probably going to use my M my new M gram set. I don't have that in very uh, many plein air palettes. I didn't want to get them in wells too deep just in case I'm in hot weather and they run. Um, but because these pans are so shallow, uh, they're going to harden to a greater extent. So I'm anxious to get some of that paint in here and try it out. So there you go. The Art Toolkit family of products, their newest member. All links below. Go check it out. All right, since we just finished up a series on color mixing with my palette, uh, the 10 color palette from M. Graham, I, I thought maybe I'd follow up with just a couple book recommendations. I think this was mentioned in the James Gurney interview. Now, if you haven't seen the James Gurney interview, I can link to it below. Uh, I think we touched on this book, but this is a good book. I don't know if I've mentioned it in any other video. Maybe I did, but... Uh, this is a good basic staple for your uh, art library. Uh, it touches on really all kinds of aspects of color and lighting, and it answers a lot of questions. One of the reasons I like it is you sort of, you know, you have questions about different ways to treat lighting or color, and it's not text heavy. So it answers them in very concise ways with really great paintings and examples from James Gurney's work. Luminescent. Nice little discussion on that. I mean, just it's it's chock full of tons of subjects having to do with color. Too much really to go through here. If you want to pause the screen, here's a close up or as close as I can get. Hopefully you can read that on the uh, table of contents. See some of the subjects that are covered. Sources of light, light and form, elements of color, paint and pigments. Surface effects, visual perception, atmospheric effects, color relationships. So he covers a lot of things. Now, uh, one thing about this is all of his examples are in oil. Or I think most of them are. I, I didn't see, I know he paints a lot in gouache, but I didn't see them in here. Maybe he did. But uh, So a lot of this is oils. And as such, it's just a general guide to color. He's got a great chapter on rethinking the color wheel and making your own color wheel. So a good reference guide that if you want to get deeper into exploring color and its use, this will answer a lot of questions. This will provide a lot of info and probably send you off in some directions that you hadn't thought of before. Now he does approach this somewhat from an illustrator's mindset because he is an illustrator. I mean, he's a fine artist too, but uh, his primary career has been as an illustrator and a realist. So it's gonna be in that realm, but he is a master himself of color and light. And if you wanna learn those aspects of art, uh, who better to learn it from. Great book. Should be in every artist's library. Every realist artist especially. All right, the other uh, recommendation I have is this one, Making Color Sing by Jean Doby. Now she's a watercolorist. So what I like about this book is it is specifically in the realm of using watercolor. So she approaches that that way and she approaches it uh, purely from a fine art standpoint. Now, I think that this book is a little more advanced in terms of understanding uh, some of the way she talks uh, and presents her material is a bit uh, esoteric, I guess you could say. You can Google esoteric if you don't know what it means. It's not for the beginner. Uh, so it has some basic concepts, but it also has some very advanced concepts. And if you're a, a bookie and love books on art and like to dig into the text and the ideas uh, presented, you know, by a master colorist, then this is a good one to do that with. But I, I think you do have to dig into the text a little bit for understanding as her explanations are not what I would call simplistic. She has lots of examples. Um, I would say, uh, again, you know, the plus of this book is that she is a watercolorist. 
So it's in that vein. But the other plus is that uh, she has a lot of exercises. She has it broken down into exercises. So you can pick out, you don't have to necessarily go cover to cover or beginning to end with this unless you're an absolute beginner. If you're an absolute beginner, I don't necessarily recommend this, but uh, I think that you can kind of pick and choose. Pick out one of her um, exercises. I love this chapter, for instance, white glows. Talks about how white really isn't white. Gives a nice example of using white in situations and adding color in what is normally a white subject. So she gets into some very uh, interesting but useful subject. Glazing. Uh, one of the other things I loved about this book is that she really talks uh, a good bit about glazing and how that can change a piece. How, can, how you can use that to uh, rescue or visually mix something I talk about a lot. Uh, color, once you put it down, can be altered and made more useful using layers and glazes. Correcting with glazes. Transforming a painting with glazes. Creating transitions between colors. And again, she introduces you to color concepts that you may have not have thought of in particular ways, in the ways that she's discussing. So just like with James Gurney's book, uh, it will send you off in new directions uh, to try things and learn things. And some new comprehension of color. And I like that it's not a theory book. I think there's enough color theory, see my air quotes out there, you know, academic textbook color theory doesn't necessarily help you. This is a practical book that deals in practical application rather than a lot of theory. So that's why I like it. But, but again, you kind of have to dig into the text. It's not what I would call a easy read. There's that, but it's worth it. I think, if you really want to study color. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed watching that. Hope I showed you some things you can use. We'll see you in the next video, whenever that is. <laughs> I'm not sure at this moment, but uh, we'll get back on track eventually. I'll take you out today with a few nature shots from our summer here in sunny South Carolina.